Hey everybody, welcome back for episode 142 of The Path Podcast. I'm Jason. Hey, I'm Derek. And we are so glad that you have decided to join us on The Path today. It was Easter weekend for us uh, this past weekend. Yesterday was such a such an incredible day in worship. And um, man, there's just something so special about the body of Christ gathering to pour out their hearts to the Lord. And yesterday it was an incredible day. And um, it, it's just... It, it does my heart good. We were talking before we started about how, like, just the sound of voices that filled the room yesterday in worship was just incredible, and um, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, but Derek, you, we started a new series yesterday, and um, we're looking at sort of the last sayings of Jesus, both on the cross and the very last things he said before he ascended. Um, and so, talk to us for just a second about how. Number one, why did we start this yesterday? Because we haven't really talked about that yet. Uh, but why, why did we start this Last Word series on Easter Sunday? Um, and then let's dig into to the last words that we looked at yesterday. Yeah. Why did we, why did we start it on <laughs> Easter? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, for one, we wanted to get some of First Corinthians out of the way. Um, mm-hmm. And then, I, you know, we started on Easter... And we're, we're a little out of order, really, because... Mm-hmm. You know, with the order of the sayings. The yeah. order of the sayings, this is the sixth saying from the cross. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we didn't even start with the last. We start just <laughs> yeah, kind of in the middle. One, you yeah. know? But it it, yeah. it pertains to right. Easter, of course. Yeah. So it's, it's not just, you know, of course the whole cross pertains to Easter. But uh, particularly this saying um, of it is finished... Um, pertains to you know Christ's you know accomplishment of mm-hmm. of everything uh, in this moment, and so somewhat in you know an accidental way, but I think ultimately in, in the Lord's leading, yeah, this becomes a springboard into these other um, seven, uh, eight sayings yeah. that we'll we'll look at, and so. Um, though that was number six, it it actually works out really well mm-hmm. to be that thing that informs all the others. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think the rest of the series is going to flow out of this thought of what we what we discovered and, and looked at uh, yesterday on Easter Sunday. The these three words of it is finished. Mm-hmm. Uh, one note um, about yesterday. Number one. It's it's just cool. It's kind of a weird cool, but <laughs> when you're like two songs in and people are still trying to find seats, yeah, yeah, yeah that was cool. Yeah. Um, which we had overflow to uh, open yeah. up, and just the fact that we had people in overflow was exciting, you mm-hmm. know. So for sure. Um, so there, but there's just an energy that's there. You yeah, know, we we talked about it beforehand. The um, the singing was was loud, you know, uh, yeah. which man, that's always great. Um, but we jumped into this last word series, mm-hmm. um, and and I think you know, man, it's so significant. You know, what did Jesus say mm-hmm. at the last? You yeah. know, what did he say on the cross? What did he say at the end of his life? Because yeah. that's you know where we put a lot of stock in in other people's thoughts on yeah. at the end of their life. So what did Jesus say? You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of, and that's. Ultimately, why we started this series, it, it fit really well to to launch out from Easter. Yeah, I do think it's sometimes uh, church. I mean, and we've done either one. Sometimes Easter falls at the end of a series, right? Yeah. You conclude mm-hmm. it with that. Man, I think I I like when Easter starts something. So it's like, hey, come back next week yeah. for the next one. Yeah, yeah we're going to come continue back on next with this. For yeah. the, you know, that's. Probably my main thought when we first kind of looked at this, mm-hmm. um, you know, what, probably a year ago, half yeah. a year ago. So um, I guess, yeah, over a year ago. So, um, but that you asked, why, why do we start here? There's my answer. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's a good thought. And um, and I, lo- I love starting here to like you, you had said, um, starting with it is finished because, yeah, you would. Typically, like the, you know, we're, this is not a novel idea to look at the sayings of Jesus. From no, the this happens. Yeah, lots of people have done yes, this, it, a, a series a, like this. Yeah. But typically, they go in order. Like they'll start yeah. at like the first thing he said at the cross and go through mm-hmm. to the end. And and for us to just pick one in the mm-hmm. middle, it's like, well, hold on now. What's the thought process on why you started in the middle? Mm-hmm. Well, 
um, like you had said, that it sort of informs everything else. And I think that um, that what Jesus says, like in this phrase, it is finished, um, it's one that I think we, we rightly celebrate as Christians, but I don't know that we always fully think about the like the complete implications of what he's saying there what what he is saying when he says it is finished and so um i think it's important for us to get um and i think you did a great job of this yesterday of giving us a, a fuller picture of what that the meaning of that it wasn't just i've done the thing it was it is finished and this has incredible implications stretching out from here Mm -hmm. um there's one of the one of the very first things that i remember my very first day of seminary in greek class introduction to greek we talked about this phrase because in greek it's just one word it's to tell us die yeah and it's in the just for just a second to nerd out but like it's a it's in a future voice which means it's finished but it's finished now and will have implications forever Mm -hmm. into the future and i remember i remember being a seminary student going like what i've mm. never heard that before but yeah. that makes that mean so much more mm-hmm. than it than just it is finished like my brain exploding because um you know it's it, it really is this definitive statement that jesus mm-hmm. makes and so um yeah I'd, I'd love for us to dig back into what what all what all it means there uh, that you talked about yesterday yeah th- there's a lot packed into those three words you yeah know? um um in fact, seven things that we, we looked at. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, which, <laughs> you know, normally I, I try to go pretty short on Easter. Yeah. And uh, I feel like I did pretty good. For the record, it was pretty good. That you got through seven points really quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I was about to say, I think, I think you know, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a record or anything. But, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Uh, I felt like, okay, I got through that quick enough. But, yeah. Um, but it's you know yeah. I'm sure when people picked up the the worship <laughs> handout that's yeah. got seven points they're like oh, oh no. No. we're gonna yeah. be here all oh, day no. <laughs> um, so hopefully they were pleasantly surprised we did get out like around yeah around we got like the, normal time yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, we packed a lot into that hour yes, yesterday yeah yeah yes so um, but beyond that it really is a lot I mean it's it's three simple words and so I mean it's barely a sentence yeah. you know I mean mm-hmm. like uh, if you think about it from structure wise, it has all the elements, but yeah. just barely, yeah. you know, to make it a sentence. And, but in those three words, these power packed words, there's so much mm-hmm. that um, there's so much meaning of what actually was being accomplished, what mm-hmm. was finished, what was done, what had been, um, um, what Jesus had accomplished. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I think, I think that you know, in and of itself, uh, is significant to see all those things, and just how much it means for us. You know, you're going to preach next week, mm-hmm. and uh, we we really we're really switching it up on everybody. We're not following yeah. any kind of structure <laughs> right. necessarily. So we're jumping out of the cross and the sayings of the cross mm-hmm. to um, the great commission. The great commission, mm-hmm. but. The Great Commission has power, yeah, because of because these three words. of what Jesus did in mm-hmm. in these three words and on the cross, of course, yeah, and in His resurrection, yeah. But what He accomplished, what He finished, what He you know was definitively done, but done for the future as well, yeah, um, informs what we do, yeah, and how we live, yeah, and how we march forward. And how we are on mission, you mm-hmm. know, um, and then we'll look at, you know, word, the word of forgiveness. We'll look at the word of, um, of suffering. We'll look at all these other words that Jesus spoke, and each one of them is is informed, if you will, by the 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 finality mm-hmm. of what the cross accomplished. Yeah, um, and so. Um, We, we were talking beforehand, and you said a, a great phrase. Cause, and I think I said this the week before because we talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and mm-hmm. Paul says, I'm glad that I knew nothing among you except for Christ and crucified. I preached the cross mm-hmm. to you. Right? Yeah. 
And so what, what we said is that oftentimes, and I've heard it, you know, it's like, hey, we always talk about the cross. Let's go a little bit deeper, mm-hmm. you know. And yep. so uh, remind us of the phrase that you um, yeah, you said ahead of um, time. J.D. Greer, who's pastor of Summit Church in uh, Durham, North Carolina, um, Raleigh area, he wrote a book called Gospel, and he says that often we look at the gospel as the diving board that we jump off of into the pool of Christianity, but in reality, the gospel is the pool, and we should just swim deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Um, because it, you, I've heard the phrase too, and people who are listening have probably heard this too, of like, man, we just I need to go deeper than just the gospel. And it's mm-hmm. like, brother... The gospel is as deep as it gets, man. Mm-hmm. Like it is, it is the thing that that we are to dig deeper and deeper into. Now, we can learn more about the intricacies of how the gospel impacts everything, but there's never going to be a moment where you go, "Okay, I've got the gospel, now let me move on to the real things of Christianity." Mm-hmm. Um, it's always about the gospel. <laughs> I just had this picture of Ellison's Cave, which is mm. uh, a world-renowned cave, but it's in Walker County, Georgia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's in the county we live in. And uh, I've only seen pictures because I'm not a fan of caves. A <laughs> um, little, big, little big to be trying to navigate through caves. But the gospel is like that cave, like just from the surface and just like you, you can't see it. Yeah. Um, and you can't fully appreciate how massive it is yeah. until you've gone to the depth of the, the mm-hmm. cave, you know what I mean? Like yeah. to the to the bottom of it. And that's what the gospel is. That's what the cross is. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're to do is just mind the depths. Yeah. Mind the depths of the gospel. Mind the depths of the cross. Mind the depths of what Christ has done. And we're just going to keep on digging up treasures. That's right. You know? This side of eternity, we're never going to get to the bottom no. of it. And that, I mean, I think Paul, that's what Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians. We'll talk about this, but he says, you know, now we see through a mirror dimly. Mm -hmm. Like it's always going to be veiled to us this Mm -hmm. side of eternity, but there will come a day when that veil will be removed and we'll get to see the whole picture of the gospel when we're face to face with Jesus Mm -hmm. in heaven. Which which can be challenging to preach through because if you're not careful, you can, you can, just keep talking about the same aspects of it, sure. right? Or just saying the same things over and over again, yeah. And not mining new depths. But the thing is, is you know, part of this is you know, illumination too. It's the Holy Spirit's work, but mm-hmm. you know, He begins to let us see new facets yeah. of, you know, um, I think, uh, think of a diamond. You know, diamond. Um, um, you you just look at it and and see every little thing and you have to look sometimes through a little Mm -hmm. you know uh, magnifying glass and you know just to see all the intricacies of that uh, gem or that jewel and it's like the gospel is like that for us and the cross of christ is like that for us it's just something that we turn a new way and it's like oh yeah i didn't see that before yeah wow yeah and it might be the smallest minutest Mm -hmm. detail but it just opens up and unlocks a new thing. Sure. Yeah. To me, that's what these three words were like. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Um, studying for it, but then I hope conveying it yesterday. And uh, so we'll jump into yeah. uh, these seven seven things that we see um, in this, in just these three words. Um, number one, we see that uh, in these words, his promises are accomplished. Mm-hmm. And I, I said this, and I, I hope it was understandable. Like, at the cross, every single promise that was made by God was not accomplished on the cross. Yeah. But everything that needed to be accomplished up until that moment was accomplished. Mm-hmm. You know, there was... there's. There's Revelation. There's the Book of Revelation. There's the Second Coming of sure. Christ. I mean, there's the. There's promises. still the resurrection to happen. After yeah. This well, point. really, yeah. 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 Uh, there, but there's, there's, there's a whole host of promises still yet to be sure. accomplished at this moment at the cross. But what Jesus is saying by saying it's finished is like, woman, man, you know, mm-hmm. the 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 Messiah was bo- born of a woman, born of a virgin woman. Mm-hmm. Born in the house and lineage of David, yeah. born in Abraham's seed, you know, born the root of Jesse's mm-hmm. stump, you know, um, that he was born in Bethlehem, that he was, you know, um, despised and rejected, mm-hmm. as Isaiah uh, 
prophesy. Uh, mm. A man of sorrows. Yeah. Uh, Psalm uh, 2 uh, teaches us that, uh, that he they was would pierced div- for our transgression. That, yeah. yeah, that they would divide his uh, mm-hmm. That even that they would divide his um, garments and yeah. and all those things, uh, and that you know, um, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right, yeah. that that at this point when he says it is finished had been accomplished. Yeah. Right, and even that moment when he took that sour wine mm-hmm. was this final thing, this signal, this moment for Jesus to say, "It is done." Yep. It's all been done. All those things that were promised have come true at this moment and yeah. this in this um in this possi- yeah, in this um in this exact moment. Yeah. So um yeah. so we see that his prophecies or the promises about Jesus were accomplished yeah. up until this moment. Um we said that he here we see his sufferings complete. Yeah. Right. And so I took a moment to just talk about the cross, man. And I remember I had a youth pastor who um, who did this um, this message a few times um, while we were in youth uh, with him. And um, so powerful, man. He spent a whole the whole time trying to convey Mm -hmm. the sufferings related to the cross right Mm -hmm. so he he kind of did this vivid and i remember just it was vivid this presentation of every aspect leading up to the cross and then the the torturous Mm. nature of this form of um execution execution you know it was it was Something not only to plague the body, mm-hmm. and it plagued the body terribly, but it also plagued the mind. Yeah, you know, it was just a the most gruesome torture yeah. device, if you will. Um, and it was designed that way. The Romans right. designed it that way. Um, so, you know, we we talked through that. I, I kind of went through all those things that he suffered. Yeah, and in this moment. The sufferings were done, right, right? right? I mean, all that was left to do was him to say, you know, um, into thy hands I commit my spirit, you know, and then it, he's done. Yeah. Um, so up into this one, all those sufferings uh, of Christ were complete. Mm-hmm. Um, have you thought or any stories about how you kind of have learned about just how gruesome the cross was? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd heard several pastors talk about it mm-hmm. um but for me and it and i know that even even this is doesn't fully grasp it but um i remember being in high school and going to see the passion of the christ mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um that was you know the first time that i had ever um seen what i had heard described mm-hmm. um and i it wrecked me man like mm-hmm. it wrecked me that to know that um that Jesus went through all of that for me. Yeah. Um, and, and just like the, the, the picture in my mind that's like seared in my mind from, um, uh, the passion of the Christ is, um, when he's being, uh, whipped with a cat of nine tails, like there's one scene and, you know, it's gruesome, but where, um, the Roman centurion like whips him and it, it rips a chunk of flesh off of mm-hmm. his, side and you can see his ribs and mm-hmm. you know just that that imagery of of the torture that Jesus went through um man it just it it marked me I, like I remember um I remember just sitting in my car like because Kim and I went to the theater to see it and mm-hmm. I remember just sitting in my car just weeping like mm-hmm. I couldn't leave like couldn't even leave the parking lot mm-hmm. um just thinking of of all of those things that Jesus went through and how just it, it, like you look at it and you're like, gosh, that's so unnecessary. Mm-hmm. But he went through it. He went through it anyway for us. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I just remember that, I, that that's the that's the one image that's just seared in my mind from that movie of. And I don't know why that one, but it's just that mm-hmm. one marked me of of all of the <laughs> images in that movie um, of, of just really getting a better grasp of how gruesome crucifixion was mm-hmm. uh, that the and the Romans were masters of um, prolonging and um, magnifying pain mm-hmm. in the person that was being executed yeah 
Yeah. This punishment was reserved for, you know, criminals. Yeah. You know? And here Jesus is. He didn't do anything wrong. Right. You know? Uh, even his sham trial, mm-hmm. they put him through. Um, they couldn't come up with anything, you know? Right. Pontius Pilate, they probably didn't care to kill somebody. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it's just normal for all of them. It's like, why did you guys send this guy yeah, to me? This you know? guy hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah, just take Barabbas. Like, he's he's yeah. like an actual criminal. Like, right. No, we don't want him crucify Jesus, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that form of death, he went through the most gruesome form of death, mm-hmm. I think, to date. To accentuate what Romans six twenty three says, mm. that says the wages of sin is death, and so Jesus, yeah. he didn't just die; he died at the hands of masterful mm-hmm. tormentors. Yeah, for us. Yeah, you know, um, and not just that he died for us, but that he suffered for yeah, us. Yeah, he suffered. Yeah, he yeah. suffered for us. It's true because this. This lasted for hours. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't just like, let's go whip him and then take him straight to the cross. This lasted for hours. Mm-hmm. And it would have been complete and utter agony mm-hmm. to experience and to watch. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, terrible. Yeah, I mean, from from people blindfolding him, punching him, asking him to prophesy mm-hmm. who did it. Ripping his beard out of his, his face. Ripping his beard out, yeah. spitting on him, which is just nasty. Mm-hmm putting that crown of thorns in his head yeah. and then beating within an inch of his life. Like right. 39 lashes was like the, the limit. Yeah. All right. 40 was like de- a death sentence yeah. in, in and of itself. So 39 lashes. And then, you know, I've heard people say it like this. I tried not to be too gruesome yesterday. Uh, so uh, what you're welcome on the podcast is a little <laughs> more gruesome. Yeah. But like, it was like hamburger meat, like mm-hmm. the, his back, you know? Yeah. Um, Ribbons of flesh, I think yeah. is how I've heard it described. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. um <clears throat> Yeah, and so when Isaiah says he was pierced for our transgressions, mm-hmm. you know, he he was um his by his stripes, mm-hmm. right? By his wounds, but some translations say yeah, by, by his stripes. stripes. Yeah. That's stripes of flesh, you know? Yeah. And so then this robe placed on this was mind-boggling to me when my youth pastor kind of talked about this. This robe was a purple robe to indicate this yeah, mockery royalty. of his royalty. Yeah. But what what we don't understand and realize, you know, we just see purple robe or royal robe. This is made out of, because back then they didn't have like food coloring you yeah. know, or, or whatever, or dyes, dyes, you yeah. know, a, you know, chemical dyes. Mm-hmm. They utilize these snails that mm-hmm. gave off this purple color, this purple hue, yeah. when they were boiled, and those things are poisonous if they get wet. If yeah. the if the fabric got wet, it was so uh, you know. It, number one, that's interesting because that was the type of fabric you know, reserved for kings. Yeah. But here they're using it in this manner. But you know, as soon as it hit his back, open wounds. Yeah. Uh, you know, f- with blood flowing, no doubt, like this stinging, po- you know, mm-hmm. poison is just entering into his body, you mm-hmm. know. And then he's, you know, this this beam, and some people think it's around 300 pounds, is thrust upon him. Yeah. And he's forced to carry it. You know, no wonder he needed help. Right. And we see that Simeon had to do that. Um, but then they get him to the place that they're going to bury him. They put nails into not just his hands, but mm-hmm. like really more like the his wrist. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, the metatarsal, I think, is what or whatever. Anyway, the metacarpals. Anyway, yeah, metacar- metacarpals. Yeah, tarsals in the foot. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, they did that too. But yeah. uh, this particular place where all these um, nerve endings are, mm-hmm. so that anytime he moves, yeah, it's like electric shock going throughout his body mm-hmm. on his on his feet as well. And then, you know, they lift him up into the hole, you know, drop him in, mm-hmm. every joint's dislocated. Yeah. And th- and this is, it's designed this way. Right. And then to be able to get a breath of air, he's got to lift <clears throat> up on all that mm-hmm. stuff. He's got to put his weight on all, you know, these nails and all, this electrical shot going through his body. Yeah. 
It's no one. I mean, the fact that he said seven things. Yeah, the fact that he could say anything yeah. is unreal. Much yeah. less, you know. But but yeah, yeah. So, all that to say, just even to to lift himself up to get this breath to say, it is finished. In that moment, the suffering is done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it's important for us to see that because you're right. It, uh, I remember that message just wrecked me. The yeah. youth pastor then. Um, and then, you know, like, Passion of Christ movie just yeah. wrecked, you know. And, and we need to remember that. Mm-hmm. He went through that for us, and it accomplished that yeah. for us. Mm. Um, I'm moving slower than I did yesterday, so I'm moving <laughs> quick here. Here we see the goal of his incarnation. Yeah, the reason he came. Th- this was the whole, like, promise from heaven. This was God the Father when he, when he told Adam and Eve that, you know, uh, the offspring is coming. Yeah, Genesis three fifteen. Offspring is coming. Uh, the snake will bruise his heel, but he will have his head crushed by yeah. this person. This is that promise. Yeah, this is Philippians two five and following. When it says, "Jesus Christ, not counting it equality of God a thing to be grasped, emptied himself, mm-hmm. took the form of a servant, even a servant to the to the point of death on a cross." Mm-hmm. Is what it says. This is that goal of him coming to be God with us, Emmanuel, yeah. to accomplish what he came to accomplish. This is that goal of um, God's eternal plan mm. being fulfilled. We we're talking about beforehand. Um, uh, this is one of those things we were like, well, we got to start recording. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this good. is good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we started recording. Yeah. But we were talking about that, and it's like, you kind of mentioned something in that moment. It's like this cosmic, I don't remember if you were, or the, used the word yeah. universe, said or cosmic. Universal. Yeah, the universal nature of it, yeah. It just kind of unlocked another thought in my head. And, and, and um, of just it's like this this thing <clears throat> was just hovering over this weight over yeah. the whole world. Jesus entering you know, as the babe in a manger was the beginning of that. Yeah. This is the fulfillment of the fulfillment yeah. of the incarnation. This promise that had just kind of hung around yeah. now is fully yeah. realized. That's what, fully that's what Paul talks about in Romans 8, man, that mm-hmm. even even cro- creation is groaning for, mm-hmm. for things to be made right. And mm-hmm. this is that that was the point was that like, we we're thankful for these words. It is finished. I think I don't think any Christian would say they're not thankful, mm-hmm. but I don't know that we fully appreciate all the time the the universal impact mm-hmm. of what Jesus was doing in this moment. That it it doesn't just affect us as Christians. It affects all of creation uh, and and breaking the curse of sin at mm-hmm. that point. Yeah, if you think about it, like like music. Mm. So like. It's almost like this, if you think about all this as a piece of music, it's almost like you've got these crescendos and decrescendos mm-hmm. throughout history. And in this yep. moment, it's this it's this kind of crescendo. And then I think a decrescendo. Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah, oh, the explosion of the resurrection, you know? yeah. And it's just yeah. this quiet, it is finished. Mm-hmm. And then this, you yeah. know, this swell of mm-hmm. just thunderous sound you know mm-hmm. it's, it, it's kind of like the song we sang yesterday you yeah. know it's that you know is anyone or is he worthy is he mm-hmm. worthy of this he is and then mm-hmm. it's is he worthy is he worthy mm-hmm. of all blessing and honor and glory is he mm-hmm. worthy mm-hmm. he is yeah. he is he is yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and it's just like mm-hmm. that's what happened in these three words. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mm. Yeah, that's good stuff. Here we see his atonement attained. Mm. Uh, I quoted 6.23 already. I quoted it yesterday at this point. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. Yeah. The wages of my sin, mm-hmm. death. What I, what I deserve, <clears throat> yeah. Jesus is doing. Yeah. I deserved suffering. Yeah. I deserved the cross. I deserved the cat of nine tails. Mm-hmm. I deserved the crown of thorns. I deserved the purple robe. Mm-hmm. I deserved carrying the cross to the hill. Mm-hmm. I deserved all those things. The wages of sin 
is death because of my sin. Yeah. I deserved all those things. But in that moment, this great exchange happens. Yeah. Because Romans 6.23 continues and says, But yeah. the gift of God is eternal life mm-hmm. in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's the cross. Yeah. It's the cross. It's the finished work of the cross that gives me atonement for my sins. Yeah. It exchanged my sin for his righteousness. Yeah. And so atonement is attained in this moment. It's applied in this moment. And yeah. uh man, that's that is powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. And then it's the end of sin. So here we find the end of our sins, right? Um, Isaiah 53, 6 says, And the sin of everyone will be laid upon him. Mm -hmm. The sin of everyone will be laid upon him. Uh, Arthur Pink, uh, A.W. Pink, um, which was my primary source for um, a lot of the message, Mm -hmm. Um, in the book Seven Sayings of the Savior from the Cross, he says... My sin is no longer on me. Mm-hmm. He says, uh, now my sin is still in me because we, we wrestle against the flesh. Yeah. Um, but he says, but my sin is no longer on me Yeah. because it's been laid on Christ. Yeah. So the end of my sin is accomplished mm-hmm. at the cross. When yeah. he says it's finished, that means my sin is finished. The power it has on me, Yeah. Uh, the power it has over me, it's finished. It's wiped away. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Huge. I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, it's one of my favorite passages in all of the New Testament is uh, the end of Galatians chapter 3, where Paul says, for as many of you as have, have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. Mm-hmm. And and the imagery there, like in the Greek, is that it, it's like putting on a, a coat or mm-hmm. a jacket. And so that when... When Christ looks at us, he doesn't see our sin anymore. He sees his beloved son. Mm-hmm. And and that's like, to, just to kind of underscore what you're saying there, that the fact that um, it doesn't mean that we are perfected at that point. It doesn't mean that we're never going to sin again. We're never going to make a mistake. But the effects of that sin are, are no longer for mm-hmm. us. That um, that our identity has been changed mm-hmm. in Christ. Mm-hmm. That we, we are now sons and daughters of God and not wretched sinners mm-hmm. anymore. So. He who knew no sin mm-hmm. became sin yeah. for us. That we might become his righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. You what? Know, talking about, yeah, talking what? about a mind blowing moment. You <laughs> yeah. know, that's and all that is accomplished in those three words. Mm-hmm. It is finished. Yeah. I have righteousness mm-hmm. in exchange for my sinfulness. He has my sinfulness yeah. so that I could have his righteousness. Yeah. That is mind-boggling. Yeah. And just those three words, that's, if just that was the only truth that was yeah, true. It'd be incredible, us. yeah. But we've talked about all these others, and yeah. we continue with, in, the, in those three words, we see the law's requirements fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Uh, Galatians 4, you mentioned Galatians 3 a minute yeah. ago. Galatians 4, 4, and 5. It says, when the time came to completion, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law Mm -hmm. so that we might receive adoption as sons. He fulfilled and accomplished the work that was the righteous requirement of the law. He did that at the cross. It is finished means he finished the righteous uh, requirements of the law for anyone who is found in him. Yeah. And that's unreal. Mm. And the final thing we see is that here we see Satan defeated, and, you know. And I think in this moment, and it probably, yeah, probably Satan. He's just he was he got a little ahead of himself because he probably thought that you know, yeah, oh, look, he's dead, right? I defeated him, but man, that's that's the that's the it's an ironical or ironic a little bit maybe, maybe that's the right word. It's mm-hmm. paradoxical for sure. It's this idea of this powerful savior accomplished the thing that we had longed to be accomplished mm. in his weakness yeah. and in his sufferings yeah. and by dying. Mm-hmm. Victory through defeat. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
uh, it's kind of like a, a one-two punch, you know, in a yeah. way. Um, he, he, he sucker punched Satan yeah. in a way, you know. Um, it's a bad yeah. analogy, but, you know, hopefully you get my meaning. No, but, I know exactly what you're saying, yeah. But because <laughs> it is finished... And then it is solidified three days later yeah. that death couldn't hold him, mm-hmm. the grave couldn't keep him, and he is alive. Yeah, that's right. Alive. Yeah. And Satan has no power over him. Mm-hmm. And because of this, Satan has no power over me. That's right. Yeah. Because I am in Christ. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of um, there's a. Cademan's call song called Down in the Valley. And the bridge of that song says, um, it's like that long Saturday between the death and the rising day when no one wrote a word. They wondered, is this the end? Because there's there's nothing written mm-hmm. about that Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then it says, but you were down there in the well saving those who fell and lifting them to the mountain again. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just that, that idea of um, you and I are... Uh, uh, products of youth groups in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but, with the fact that you mentioned Cayman's Call. Yeah, was, yeah exactly, yeah. Is, uh, there's but, a certain group of people that are not going to know what no, we're talking about. No, they're not. But there's a certain group of people who will be like, oh, you just struck a chord with me. Oh, yeah. But, but, um, but I, I have the imagery in my head of like that song and other songs like it or like The Champion. Yeah, I was about by, to say Carmen. <laughs> yeah, by yeah, Carmen. Probably. Where, you know, like Satan was like, like we we did it, guys. We did yes, it. We yeah. we beat him. We beat him. And having no clue that he had just signed his own death warrant, kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. and and um, that's something. That's something to celebrate. That um, the victory that we get to share in in Christ. Mm-hmm. The fact that the fact that Christ did all of those things. That he was the substitute for us. Not just not just that he did it for us, but like you mentioned a while ago. I belong on that cross. Mm-hmm. You belong on that cross. But Jesus said, no, you don't have to go to this cross because I'm going to go to it. I'm going to be your substitute. And the victory that I win, that Jesus wins, he then says, I want you to share this victory with me. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the, you know, it's been it's been referred to as the, the scandal of grace, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. what, a, what a ridiculous exchange. Mm-hmm. Like, and you even mentioned yesterday that, like, for us, it's the best deal in the world. Yeah, like, it's the best deal in the world. For him, it's like, man, you're give you're you're having to give up so much mm-hmm. in order uh, for us to gain. And it's like, man, what what an incredible exchange that mm-hmm. happens at the cross. And I think, harkening back to First Corinthians thirteen, which or First Corinthians two, um, that we preached the week before, mm-hmm. and we didn't plan this because we weren't going to be there. Uh, we, <laughs> right. Some of the things that switched around, we were going to be further into First Corinthians. Yeah. When we planned all this initially, but it fits so perfectly because yeah. what we said is that uh, in First Corinthians two with the cross, that's where the power is mm-hmm. in the slain Savior. Yep. Yeah. So we think weakness, Satan thought weakness, yeah. the world thinks weakness. That's where the power. Yeah, that's where the power is. Mm-hmm. So though it seems weak, it's strength. Yeah, I think that's why Paul says later. Of course, that's what the Lord said to him mm-hmm. when he said uh, that he said, "I you know I had a thorn in my flesh, mm-hmm. and the Lord I asked the Lord to take it from me three times, and the Lord said, my." Grace is sufficient for mm-hmm. you. Uh, my power is made perfect mm-hmm. in weakness. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm. So it's like, it's this thing. It really doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You used us. a word while I go paradox is a yeah. great word for that. Yeah. It's this thing. It doesn't seem like it would make sense, but but that's how it works. Yeah. It's the weak, the weakness Mm -hmm. perceived that gives the power to overcome Satan. Yeah. To do all these things, uh, to fulfill the law, to end our sins, to attain our atonement, 
to accomplish incarnation, to rid himself of his sufferings mm-hmm. and to accomplish all the promises. Yeah. It was in his death. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then subsequently, three days later, yeah, he arose to solidify what was accomplished at the cross. At yeah. the cross. Yeah. That death couldn't hold him. You know, he be the power rose. Yeah. Uh, I think about that and I think about was it Romans one sixteen? It says uh, the power, it's talking about the power of the gospel, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, Acts 1 8, you will receive power. Power. Mm-hmm. What kind of power? The power that was accomplished in the weakness of the cross, mm-hmm. so fl- solidified in the resurrection yeah. of Jesus from death to life. That's the power yeah. we have available to us, which. <clears throat> Will lead us, yeah, which will send us out next yeah. week yep. and and further. But that it is those three power packed words and the weakness that is seemingly a part of all that. You know, you know, bloodied, beaten, mm-hmm. dead, King of the Jews. Yeah. But all those things were accomplished in you know, yeah. and gives us. The ability to do all the other stuff. That's right. Yeah, that's good stuff. Man, we could sit and talk about this for Way hours. Good, yes. Man, so good. But here's where we turn it over to you. What are your thoughts on this? We would love to talk with you about this. Um, as you can see, we could talk to each other about it for a long mm-hmm. time, but we'd love to involve you. You can uh, join into this conversation by emailing us at the path at LaFayettefirst.life or comment right on this YouTube video or on the Facebook post or wherever you're finding it. Just contact us we'd love to talk with you about it Um, and we'd love to help resource you to be able to live in power this power that we receive from christ because of what he did at the cross Um, next week we will continue on in this uh, last word series we're going to talk about the great commission it's going to be fantastic uh, and how that power sends us out Uh, but until then i am jason i'm Derek. we hope you'll join us as we continue down the path